I believe as a teacher, first and foremost, teachers go in, most teachers go into profession because they believe in kids and they believe that in some way that we can change the world. Project for Elite takes this moment in time where you have kids, every child in there who still has their hopes and dreams intact and you're able to move them. What I would like for them to take away is the belief that they can do anything and that they're developing one life skill at a time. We do think of ourselves as educating the entire person, so it's, it's classes, but it's also developing our students as leaders, as individuals, through what we call our pride program and things we do in our residential program. We have pushed hard to get our students uh, interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, what is now called the STEM areas. But we have many students who decide that they want to be in the arts. The reason we push STEM so hard is because of, of where we are in the world today and how technologically advanced things are. We just think people in the 21st century have to be uh, technologically literate. The program consists of two basic components. Are the summer program, what we call residential summer institutes, where kids come and they live uh, on the campuses and they take classes and the classes are graded. At the beginning of sixth grade at PFL, I was scared to death. I had no clue what was going on. And about half of the time, like right before bed, I was crying. But then, like after the first week, I started to make new friends and everything, so I started to feel more welcome. And it felt like home. I was reading one of the student comments just this morning, and he wrote, I wish PFL were longer. I want to be here longer. I've learned the most this year in one year not even a year of chemistry than I have in any other year of, of science. And like, when I'm here, I just feel powerful. He's truly, truly happy. He found a place where he fit. I'm a grandparent, but I'm always a grandparent trying to get her grandchildren to be successful in this world. In the classroom, the ratio would probably be seven to one. An average class size was about 16. It was about only the first two weeks. It was difficult emotionally because, you know, I wasn't used to it. But then I started to get to know people, and I didn't want to leave at the last week. Our counselor supports the students when they hit that issue, maybe of homesickness, or an issue that they tend to carry with them, that they build up a wall around, but now that they feel safe here, it's exposed. And so we can work on some of those issues with some emotional wellness. I wanted to come back and be a mentor and a role model for the students in PFL. I know when I was in PFL, I had people that I still look up to, different teachers and TAs. The other component is a school year enrichment component to make sure that what we start in the summer is continued and just to ensure continuity that it is a year-round process. The children are usually going to be from lower performing school districts. So the things that are kind of correlated with that are usually low income. Oftentimes the students predominantly are going to be of color. I mean, we have a high percentage of students who are African American and Latino. But we also have Caucasian students because we do have one or two rural school districts as well. Originally, PFL started with three school districts in Lancaster County. So now there are a total of eight districts involved in PFL as participating districts. We recruit children who have what we call academic promise and that can be indicated by their having some sort of consistent performance in a grade-wise. We use essentially a B- as a kind of an indicator. First of all, they got to be selected by a staff member, whether it's a teacher or a counselor or the principal in their school. Once they have been selected, they're given an application that must be filled out by the parents. We are concerned about parental commitment because if the parents are there, whatever we need to do, we need the parents to be partners in it. Each parent is required to do 50 hours of community service. We ask that 30 of those hours come directly from PFL. The demands of my job and just the demands of being a single mom, I thought it was a bit much until I actually got involved. And I found that the parents volunteer so much more when you actually present them with the opportunity. When you get the parents involved with the kids' educations, I think that the kid actually sees how involved the parent is and that makes that kid want to do even better. 
And Project Forward Leap, with him coming to school on Saturday, constantly having that education reinforced six days a week, it made him pursue more. It helps you in the following school years, and it's really fun, and it's better than staying at home and sometimes being bored and everything, because we're never really bored here. In urban environments, you live, you live in a box, and it's not necessarily a box that you create, but it's a box that's put on you. And so I only knew my neighborhood. And so when I actually got on the college campus, this is what people do. And it became a habit of mine as this is what I'm going to do. This is not what other people, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm training myself and my mind to get there. Teaching is an energizing profession and it's very interesting as an educator to put oneself in different positions and be part of different kinds of programs. It always informs your practice. So it's, re it's been renewing.